To get the sharpest pictures in the studio, you need a fast flash duration. The duration of the flash effectively becomes your shutter speed. Now we all probably know that if you want to freeze action, say when you're photographing sports, you need to use a fast shutter speed. When you're using studio flash, you need to use the synchronization speed for your camera, typically 125th or 250th of a second. Let me explain. Just imagine that this grey card is the sensor or the film in your camera. The shutter blinds are represented by these two black cards. If we set a one second exposure on our shutter, the first blade opens and then after one second, the second blade moves across and closes. They then reset to the start position. That used to happen when we wound the film on, remember that? OK, so as we increase the shutter speed, the blades open and close faster. It gets to a point where they can't move any quicker, so they start to work in a different way. They start to work together, travelling across the sensor, leaving a gap between. This is how we get really fast shutter speeds on modern cameras. Now it follows that if the flash were to fire whilst the blades are travelling across the sensor, the only part that would be exposed is the bit between the blades. So we end up with a section or sections of our image black, just like this. So the flash synchronisation speed of your camera is the fastest speed at which the blades open fully before they start to work together. Do you remember in the old days when we had proper cameras with shutter speed dial on the top? One of the speeds was often marked in red or replaced by a flash symbol. Well, that was the sync speed. These days we have to read the manual to find out what it is. If we're stuck with 125th as our fastest shutter speed, we have to rely on the flash durations to do the rest. Unfortunately, flash durations are the last thing most people think about when buying studio flash. And that's a bit like buying a camera that doesn't show what shutter speed you're using. So now let's look at the front of two different flash units, an Elinchrom D-Lite and the BXRI. You can see straight away that the flash tubes are quite different. Starting with the D-Lite, the power comes into the unit from the mains. Your battery flash works in the same way. The energy is stored in the unit in capacitors. You can see that the flash tube is basically a glass tube with a terminal in each end. The energy is trying to pass between these two points, but it's unable to as the tube is filled with an inert gas which is non-conductive to electrical charge. A closer look reveals a fine wire wrapped around the glass tube. This is the trigger wire. When the unit's fired, a charge of around 25,000 volts is instantly passed through this trigger wire, the gas is ionised and the charge jumps from one terminal to the other. All that stored energy is released in the form of heat and light. The length of that pulse is the flash duration. Now look at the BXRI tube. It has a different design, with a continuous glass tube with the terminals opposite each other. So we have two simultaneous flashes travelling half the distance, giving a faster flash duration. In this unit, it's over two thousandth of a second, fast enough to freeze most things. But even the small D-Lite 2 here has a fast duration. In fact, all the Elinchrom range have, and will easily synchronise with a shutter speed at two fiftieth of a second. Sadly, that's not the case for many on the market. Don't forget that as you turn the power down on a studio flash head, the flash duration lengthens. So if you only have a slow duration at full power, at minimum power, your shutter could close before your flash is finished. Not very clever. So now you know all about flash durations. Go and find out what the durations of your flash units are, because you need to know. I'm Chris Burford. Thanks for watching. Thank you.